Welcome to this week's Grad Prof DEV video with Bethany Tisdale, a graduate of the English department here at the University of South Carolina. And we're filming today not between two ferns, but between two Fridas. Uh, I'm a fan of Frida Kahlo and I have this print in my office and so that's our inside joke here before we get started. We said uh, not between two ferns but between two Fridas. So that's where we'll get started today. So Bethany, tell me a little bit about uh, your degree program and, and your experience in that degree program and right. your educational background. Right, well I did a bachelor's degree uh, in uh, Mississippi where I'm from and I came here originally for the master's program okay. in English. I ended up getting a PhD in English and a graduate certificate in Women's and Gender Studies. So I sort of collected a set mm -hmm. um, of degrees. But I knew I wanted to come here because I knew that the faculty was here to support me. I was interested in 20th century mm -hmm. American literature. And the English department has wonderful faculty in that area. And also wonderful holdings in the library. Of course, I ended up not doing any archival research, <laughs> but still the energy and the culture was right for me. Great. So tell me a little bit about what did you ultimately do your dissertation on and in what area did you land in 20th century literature and what elements of that were you investigating? Right. Well, I came here for 20th century American, uh, really interested in modernism and feminism. So my dissertation was all about women writers of the first half of the 20th century. But what's funny is I, I'm not actually working in that arena now. I kind of did, it's not really all that because it's still in the university, right. but I actually work at the School of Business. Okay. <laughs> okay, great. Well, this is perfect because one of the things we like to showcase, especially during this new series that we're having as part of our professional development offerings, is on professional journeys. So this is a perfect example of, for those of you who are pursuing a doctoral degree, but maybe don't think you want to end up in an academic setting or in a professorship position as a faculty member, that there are lots of opportunities within the academy for you. So right. tell us a little bit about, about your position now. Well, I'm a clinical assistant professor. Oh, at, excellent. Yeah, I love it. It's a non-tenure track role, but it's teaching focused, which I love. Uh, and it's over in the Center for Business Communication. So all that writing, all that researching that mm -hmm. I did as part of my PhD comes into play every day in what I do now. So it really prepared you to be an instructor in a very different setting, yeah. probably, I would yeah. imagine, than what you were in. So let's think back to when you were in your PhD program. What did you think you wanted to do? Well, I'm a planner. Oh, so okay. I don't have a five-year plan. Me I too. have a, ding, ding, ding. Right, I have a life plan, like I already know about my funeral arrangements, <laughs> you know. So when I came here for the master's program, I knew then I was going to do a PhD somewhere. And I knew that I wanted a tenure track gig and that I was going to uh, work my way up to college president one day, right? So that was my naive little plan. But once I got into the PhD program, I realized that while I loved the teaching aspect of what I was doing, I wasn't passionate about the research. Sure. And that's a hard lesson to learn when you're in that dissertating phase, right. but I didn't have the drive to really sustain me. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I started thinking about, well, I have this wonderful skill set. Right. How can I apply it? Right. So and that allowed you, in your current position, it allows you to build on your, your communication, your writing, and your skills there, and then translate those into the classroom in, a, in an entirely no, another field. That's so, exactly right. So um, are you surrounded by other folks with a business degree, or do folks have a variety of, of degrees? So in the Center for Business Communication, it's all PhDs in English or rhetoric. Okay. So... You know, I'm kind of surrounded Tell by me. my people, like, yeah. yeah it's a bit. But in the business school, it's just a very different vibe. But okay. um, but I really enjoyed it. And everything I do feels very practical in a way that really um, appeals to me. So tell me a little bit about your teaching load and what types of courses that you're teaching for students and who you're teaching. Are you teaching mostly undergrads or grads? Or tell us a little bit about that. Right. So I have kind of a unique role. It is a teaching focused role. It's split uh, with writing consulting though. Oh, okay. So the Center for Business Communication is like a writing center for business students. Excellent. So I get to do that one on one consulting, which is really gratifying. Mm -hmm. um, so that's half of what I do, and then I teach the required professional communication course for business majors. Okay. So it's a nice sort of 50-50 split there that I got going. That's a, a great way to present this, this position you're in, about a 50-50 split, because you're really building and excelling on your skill set and what you're passionate about. Yep. And that's, you found a, a great position here. So if you could go back 
and do anything differently or if there's something that you did that you're really glad that you did. Uh, tell us about that and, and what you might recommend to our current graduate students at the master's and, and doctoral sure. level. One thing that I did that I recommend all graduate students do is do all of the reading. Finish all the reading and then do more reading because you are never going to know everything you need to know. Uh, and so I would go to other reading groups. I tried to start a couple reading groups. Okay. So do all the reading knowing that you're not going to do all of the possible reading about yeah. your subject. Okay. But I think staying curious and staying engaged in that way is really important. One thing that I wish I had done a little differently is I wish I had allowed myself to really live my life and be happy earlier on. Uh, it's easy to be holed up in your office or your research carol, right. down underground in the library, staring at your screen, and you know time is marching on. Right. And I wish earlier, it took me about halfway through my PhD program to realize that I wasn't very happy because I was letting myself feel miserable and feel, sure. I would feel guilty about even entertaining the idea of having fun once in a while or taking right. a break. You know, if something wasn't directly related to my graduate work, I had these strange right. guilty feelings. Um, but about halfway through the PhD program, I decided this is my life. And right. I essentially just gave myself permission to live the life that I wanted to lead. So. Oh took that trip and I volunteered for that cause and I had that baby and I ended up a much happier person and right. really changed a lot of things for me. Those are great recommendations and in both ways really ended up in a great spot for you. So stay curious and always wanting to search for those unanswered answers to unanswered questions and then finding that work-life balance or that uh, PhD program and life balance, um, finding what's your sweet spot in that way and it sounds like you really were able to do that. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to recommend to graduate students in terms of resources or other services that maybe you took advantage of here on campus that you found to be really useful? Something that was totally invaluable to me was knowing the folks up at the University Writing Center. And right. now I'm at the business version of the Writing Center, <laughs> so business students um, need to come to the CBC. But uh, I went to the Writing Center, I had worked in it previously, and I knew that it was just a good space for me. Excuse me. <coughs> no Sorry. worries. You're good. No problem. I knew that the Writing Center was a place where I could get work done. And when I was at a crucial period where I was kind of stuck dissertating, we had a dissertation camp, which I see you guys are doing some of those pretty soon. We are this fall, September 22nd and 23rd, and November 3rd and 4th. Shut up and write. Uh, boot camps in the writing center here on campus. I like yes. that name. Yes. We didn't have that kind of aggressive name, but, I did. but we yes. did have snacks then. We're having lunch. It's a great deal. Yes, I'm glad I set you up for that. That was great. It was, could um, not have been an easier pitch there. It was so great though to know that I was in a space where I had to write because I was surrounded by other people mm -hmm. furiously typing, and right. I actually hammered out a partial draft and rough outline of a chapter that I've been really putting off and struggling with. Wow. So use your writing center. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, I want to thank you, Bethany, for sharing your professional journey with us and giving some really important tips to our graduate students. So staying curious and ser searching for those uh, answers to unanswered questions and finding that work-life or school-life balance that exists and taking advantage of resources here on campus like the Writing Center. So uh, once again, Bethany Tisdale, Dr. Tisdale, who is in the Center for Business Communication here on campus at the Moore School of Business. So thanks for being our first, Bethany. We'll uh, look forward to sharing other professional journeys with you from folks who have graduated with graduate degree programs from the University of South Carolina. Until next time, we'll see you soon.